Dear students, in this lesson we will be discussing reproduction in animals. The SLOs for this topic, first asexual reproduction in animals, exemplify different types of asexual reproduction in animals, that is fission, budding, regeneration, parthenogenesis. Differentiate between identical and fraternal, fraternal twins. Then sexual reproduction in animals. Differentiate between asexual and sexual reproduction. Spermatogenesis and oogenesis. Unisexual and bisexual animals. Oviparity and viviparity. And the last SLO for today's lesson is relate external and internal fertilization with the habitat of animals here we go asexual reproduction in animals first type of asexual reproduction in animals according to your slo is fission in fission we will be discussing binary fission it is a type of asexual reproduction in which the body of the organism actually divides, particularly in binary fission, it divides into two halves. Both the halves, they grow into new individual separately. So here I have taken example of a planaria. Uh, in this picture you can see the planaria, the body is divided into two halves and each half is going to divide into new organism other examples are species of flatworm i already mentioned the examples are planaria and tapeworm cnidarians phylum cnidaria like jellyfish and from phylum echinodermata sea cucumber these are the species uh, which reproduce uh, by this mean by the process of fission so the common uh, mechanism is that the part of the body they contain special cells which are known as stem cells and these stem cells have the ability to differentiate into different types of tissues so if the body is cut into two halves each of the half it contains stem cells and stem cells will uh, form the rest of the body parts uh, for example in this piece the, uh, it can reform the eyes and the other head region uh, so this is the mechanism behind this type of reproduction next is budding budding is a form of asexual reproduction that results from the outgrowth of a part of the body leading to a separation of the bird from the original organism and formation of two individuals one smaller then the other in this picture you can see i have taken example of hydra in hydra uh, this is the parent hydra a small outgrowth develops from the parent body and it grows in size which is known as bird when this bud is separated from the main body it can survive independently as a diff uh, as an independent individual that's why budding is another type of asexual reproduction. The common examples are uh, some invertebrates such as hydra and corals. Regeneration. Many animals can regenerate, that is regrow or grow new part of their bodies to replace those that have been damaged. Regeneration actually, it is to regrow the lost body part. Uh, for example, in human beings, we can also regenerate our uh, different tissues which have been damaged. They can regenerate like the skin cells uh, or the liver cell in human beings. But in, in this, under this topic, regeneration is a form of reproduction that is common in some animals. Uh, here I have mentioned lizard. Lizard, for example, if, it lo uh, if the tail is lost, uh, it can regrow a new one that is regeneration but regeneration as a type of reproduction is common in starfish in starfish you can see uh, the body is uh, broken down 
it is uh, like for example these are the arms of starfish usually five arms depending uh, on the pattern of the breakdown uh, the starfish for example if a small portion of starfish is broken down it can just regenerate the lost part but if it is divided into two equal parts almost equal parts then each of the part can regrow into a new starfish so in this sense uh, regeneration is also a type of asexual reproduction fourth is parthenogeny uh, in this type of asexual reproduction an unfertilized egg develops into new offspring so parthenogenesis um, uh, it is same like the parthenocarpy we discussed parthenocarpy in plants like uh, development of fruit without seed so that was a asexual reproduction but here it is parthenogenesis it is common in some fishes frogs insects um, they are produced by parthenogenesis but the common example is honey bee you all know that honey bees have uh, the female which used uh, to lay eggs she is known to be queen and the rest of them they are workers and the males are known as drones queen and drone queen the female it uh, it has the ability to it lays eggs and then it receives the sperms from the male that is the drone which are st uh, stored in a special structure special pouch and the eggs uh, the st uh, sperms are stored and the eggs can be the uh, fertilized using those uh, stored sperms and they cannot be fertilized as well so if the eggs are fertilized the resulting individual will be for example if here uh, this is a diploid female it lays eggs and if the eggs are fertilized the resulting individual is going to be diploid female right and if it lays eggs and the the eggs are not going to fertilize and they are directly going to form an individual that is haploid male so here you can see male is always haploid uh, so when it is going to form meiosis uh, it is going to form sperms it, it is haploid and the sperms are result of mitosis not meiosis meiosis does not take place in male and these sperms they are going to fertilize the female eggs so the resulting individual is a diploid female uh, and the eggs which are not fertilized they are going to develop into male uh, so you might get confused that uh, how uh, the male like uh, it is not fertilized and the egg is not fertilized and it is going to develop male so sex determination in honey bee is actually due to somatic chromosomes not the sex chromosome unlike human beings uh, they don't have uh, the sex chromosome that is x and y chromosome the the gender is determined in males by the somatic chromosomes and in females the gender is determined by the uh, x the chromosomes which are the last pair of chromosome which is known as sex chromosome right so the haploid x develop into haploid drones by parthenogenesis moving on next as law is differentiate between identical and fraternal twins uh, as the name suggests that identical twins means mm, the twins which are physically identical to each other so this is also known as monozygotic twins one egg is fertilized and at two cell stage the fertilized egg or the zygote it splits and each cell grow into individual each of the cell uh, at two cell stage the fertilized egg separates and development is and development takes place independently separately so the resulting individuals are physically identical the gender is always same and the placenta is usually shared by both the embryos on the other hand fraternal twins are uh, also known as dizygotic twins two eggs are fertilized by two sperms and produce two genetically unique children 
of course um, sometimes it happens that a female produces usually a female produces only one egg um, according to the monthly uh, cycle but sometimes a female can produce two eggs and if both the eggs are uh, fertilized independently by the sperm cells because you know that there are millions of sperms uh, so uh, if eggs are available then for uh, um, the fertilization is possible because there are so many sperms so two different eggs are fertilized by two different sperms so the individuals are going to be physically different so they are known as fraternal twins the gender can be same as well as it can be different placenta is separate for each embryo here is the um, diagram through which you can understand the mechanism of monozygotic or identical twins and fraternal twins in identical twins one egg is going to be fertilized by a sperm and at two cell stage the cells separate and they develop independently into different embryos and as a result they will be um, delivered as two different individuals which are known as identical twins on the other hand fraternal twins um, two different eggs are going to be fertilized by two different sperms um, two different zygotes they develop of course they will undergo development separately and they will have a different placenta placenta is the tissue which attaches the embryo with the mother body right next slo is um, differentiate between asexual and sexual reproduction you already know that uh, what is the difference between asexual and sexual reproduction because we have discussed this topic when we were discussing reproduction in plants but let's have a brief revision asexual reproduction involves only one organism and it involves two organisms no production of gametes in case of asexual reproduction and in case of sexual reproduction male and female gametes are produced there is no fusion of gametes of course if there are no gametes then no fusion of gametes um, it involves the fusion of gametes male and female gamete um, it requires only mitotic division we have already discussed it and it requires meiotic division followed by mitosis for the development it produces offsprings that are identical to the parent of course they are the result of mitosis so they are going to be exactly similar to the parent mm, here there is genetic variation because uh, two different gametes from two different parents they are going to fuse and there is a great genetic makeup there is a genetic variation so they are not going to be identical in this case uh, genetic variation is only through random mutation if there is any mutation mutation is sudden change in the gene sequence um, however in this there is more chance of genetic variation of course um, asexual reproduction is not very useful for natural selection in evolution of species of course they are similar so they they can they are not uh, accepted natural selection means those uh, species which are favorable or which are suitable uh, for survival uh, so it can not lead to evolution as well uh, however sexual reproduction is highly useful for natural selection and evolution of species it occurs by budding fragmentation sporulation and other examples we already discussed in the above slides um, sexual reproduction it occurs due to pollination and fertilization in case of plants pollination followed by fertilization in case of human beings um, it is fertilization that can be internal fertilization or that can be external fertilization moving on differentiate between spermatogenesis and oogenesis spermatogenesis is actually sperm from the sperm spermatogenesis is the formation of sperm cell and oogenesis means formation of the ovum so spermatogenesis occurs in seminiferous tubules of testes testes are the male gonads where spermatogenesis takes place and in case of females um, oogenesis the formation of ovum takes place in the female gametes the, that are the pair of ovaries it is a process by which sperms are formed of course we already discussed from sperm mother cells uh, and oogenesis it is the process by which ovum is formed from the oogonia in the female we will be discussing this topic um, in the when we will discuss 
male and female reproduction in human we will have a little overlook on this topic as well so in spermatogenesis only or oh sorry one spermatogonium forms four sperms or the spermatozoa cells on maturation uh, so in case of uh, spermatogenesis at a time from a single cell from a single sperm mother cell four sperms are going to form uh, on the other hand in case of um, females one oogonium that is the ovum mother cell it is going to form only one ovum and the polar bodies which are degenerated so only one one ovum is released in males at a time from a single cell four sperms are released mm, but collectively there are many sperms because spermatogenesis is a continuous process however oogenesis is a cyclic process which occurs um, only uh, which has to cover the monthly cycle that is about 28 days cycle so every 28 days a female is going to release only one ovum however sperms are not in a cyclic manner they are going to be released um, uh, irrespective of the cycle so th next is in male spermatogenesis occurs throughout the life and it occurs throughout the life after puberty uh, it occurs throughout the life of a male uh, however oogenesis it stops at a certain age that is called menopause usually 45 to 50 age so a female is uh, that the monthly cycle stops that is known as menopause uh, in case of spermatogenesis polar bodies are not formed and in case of oogenesis polar bodies are formed here is the diagrammatical representation of spermatogenesis and oogenesis see this is the sperm mother cell spermatogonium uh, it undergoes mitosis and produces primary spermatocytes which are quietly um, large in size than the mother cell and after uh, this is the multiplication phase actually the sperm mother cells they multiply in number and then they undergo meiotic division meiosis and the diploid cell is going to form haploid secondary spermatocytes these undergo meiosis too and they will form four spermatids which are immature and they are going to be differentiated into specialized cells which are known as the sperms on the other hand the multiplication phase is same like the oogonium it undergoes me uh, mitotic division and it produces large number of primary oocyte and this multiplication phase takes place um, during the embryonic stage that the, when a female is inside her mother womb she has all the primary oocytes ready in the ovary and this phase will start or they are going to undergo meiosis when a girl reaches um, puberty like that is 12 to 13 age at that age these primary oocyte one of the primary oocyte undergoes meiosis and it forms secondary oocyte and one big cell that is secondary oocyte and one smaller cell it has less cytoplasmic content that's why it cannot sustain and it dies so the surviving uh, secondary oocyte it undergoes second meiotic division and it forms ootit uh, and a second polar body it will again degenerate and the second uh, the ootit is going to form the ovum uh, remember in human beings in human body ovum is the largest cell and sperm cell is the smallest cell so when they fertilize Mm, they can form zygote and that is the sexual reproduction next is differentiate between unisexual and bisexual animals so unisexual animals have a reproductive structure that is either functionally male or functionally female unisexual means an animal is ha uh, having only only one sex either it is female or it is male so most of the animals are unisexual means sexes are separate in human human beings are on, uh, also unisexual because there there is a separate like males and females the sexes are separate um, for example dogs humans tigers etc on the other hand bisexual animals means bisexual animals have both the sexual organs present within the same organism so they are also known as hermaphrodite example is earthworm earthworm has 
um, female reproductive system as well as male reproductive system. So self fertilization can take place in these animals. Uh, tapeworm is another example. Crustaceans and the aquatic insects they are also bisexual. So bisexuality is common in invertebrates. Uh, rest of the animal kingdom they belong to they are unisexual animals. Moving on last differentiation is uh, differentiate between oviparity and viviparity. Ovi is derived from ovum right so animals oviparous animals lay fertilized or unfertilized eggs so egg laying animals they are oviparous and viviparous animals give birth to their young ones uh, in case of oviparity the fertilized eggs remain covered by hard shell usually uh, shell and laid in safe place uh, after period of incubation young ones are hatched you can take the example of birds and uh, reptiles they lay eggs in uh, lay, lay, uh, they lay eggs uh, covered with the shell hard shells and which are for the protection purpose protecting uh, the embryo inside the egg from the harsh environmental condition and they, when they are incubated and uh, they can be hatched into young ones chances of survival of young one is less as the female lay egg in uh, lay eggs in the open environment so in case of oviparity survival chances are very less um, for example their eggs can be damaged by the environment their eggs can be eaten by other animals other organisms um, so examples are birds and reptiles um, in case of viviparity the fertilized egg develop into a young one inside the female body so chances of survival is more because of proper embryonic care and protection inside the mother body examples are most of the mammals such as human beings cow lion tiger horse rat cat and dog etc moving on the last slo of today's lesson is relate external and internal fertilization with the habitat of animal so we have two types of fertilization external fertilization and internal fertilization external as the name suggests that if the fusion of gametes takes place outside the female body in in the environment so that is external fertilization and external fertilization is only possible in aquatic environment where the gametes can swim towards the female male gametes can swim towards the female gamete in water water medium is suitable for external environment um, the development is also external due to the constant or stable conditions of the water so aquatic environment is quite safe as compared to uh, uh, terrestrial environment for external fertilization so common examples are amphibians and pisces frog and fish um, they lay eggs uh, in their environment the aqua aqueous environment and they are fertilized by the sperm cells and development occurs there on the other hand internal fertilization is fusion of gamete inside the female body in terrestrial condition fertilization is internal so the habitat for internal fertilization is terrestrial some of the aquatic animals can also undergo internal fertilization this may lead to external development so fertilization is internal but development can be external as well as internal how um, in case of oviparous anim uh, animals such as birds and uh, reptiles the fertilization is internal and a fertilized egg is laid covered with a shell and uh, outside the body they are incubated usually giving the body temperature of the mother um, the, for example birds sit over their eggs and the eggs are incubated they are given specific temperature so development occurs at that specific temperature that is those organisms are the development is external and they are known as oviparous in case of mammals fertilization is internal as well as development is also internal inside the female body which give birth to the young ones which is known as viviparity or the organisms are known as viviparous so here are some of the differences between internal and external fertilization it involves the fusion of male and female gamete inside the female body internal fertilization external fertilization involves the fusion of male and female gamete outside the female body 
here i already mentioned chances of survival uh, of the offspring are more therefore a small number of eggs are produced usually small for example in case of human being only one egg is produced uh, however uh, external fertilization chances of survival is less that's why they lay a large number of eggs uh, uh, if taking a, if we will take an example of a fish a fish can lay th up to 300 eggs at a time because most of the eggs they can be damaged they can be eaten by other fishes and so the chances of survival is less that's why they lay maximum number of eggs and some of them get fertilized examples are human cows ha hands are organisms showing internal fertilization and external fertilization fish frogs starfish and other organisms mostly the aquatic organisms